In this lesson, we're going to have a look at the bodily view of personal identity. This is the first of two theories that we're going to be exploring in this course about how we can explain our ideas of personhood, our ideas of who we are as people. So specifically, we're going to look at it, we'll do a little introduction and a recap. We're going to redo a summary of the bodily view of, per, of personal identity. And we're going to ask, why should we believe in the bodily view of personal identity? They're the three main things that we're going to look at here. So as an introduction, this is the first way we're going to look at the questions that we asked in the first lesson. And these questions are, who am I and what are my persistent conditions? As in, what conditions do I have that allow me to persist from a point A to a point B in time? In looking at this, we're going to work out what we call the necessary conditions and the sufficient conditions for personal identity. So what is the bodily view of personal identity? The bodily view simply states that what I am fundamentally is my body. So my persistence conditions are just my bodily persistence conditions. So everything that I am that makes me a person is just everything that is physically uh, a body towards me. Okay. So answering the questions of persistence is just answering questions about what, how does a body persist? And this is our thesis. This is effectively the fundamental question of the bodily view. The bodily view simply states that the only thing that makes a person a person that we could really describe as a person is that they have a human body. Okay. How can we fit this into our philosophical theories, though? The th theories of identity. How can we understand the bodily view also by looking at the ideas of necessary and sufficiency when it comes to the conditions of persistence. They're the things that are a little bit more complicated that we're going to have to have a look at here. So according to the bodily view, a necessary condition for personal persistence is if I persist, it means my body persists. I simply cannot persist without my body. The only thing that is required and the only thing that is required and the ultimate thing that is required for persistence, for personal persistence, is you have a body that also persists. That's according to the bodily view. Or you could take a weaker claim towards the bodily view and says, suggest that if I have a body, if my body persists, then that's a sufficient reason for me to believe that I as a person persists. Now, these both are just different formulations of the bodily view, uh, fundamentally. When it comes to the sort of technical know-how about persistence and about the bodily view of personal identity, we look at a person X that exists at a time T1, and then we have a look at a thing, some entity that exists at time T2, and what we want to do is say, if these two things are numerically identical to each other, what are the conditions that have allowed this X to co persist from time T1 to time T2? That's what the question of persistence is. And really the, the bodily view just states that X equals Y, X is numerically identical to Y, if and only if, that's what this little if with two Fs uh, means, if and only if X and Y are the same body. So what the bodily view is stating is that persistence from time T1 to time T2 occurs only because your body is persisting from time T1 to time T2. Your body at time T1 is the same as your body at time T2. And this is effectively the bodily view. It's as simple as that. It doesn't make any claims about what it, makes, what it means to be a body. It just claims that if you have a body, you are a person. So when we talk about trying to work out what it takes for somebody to say that they have a body, that becomes a little bit more complicated. The bodily view doesn't actually have a, a leg in that fight. It doesn't actually make any claims about what you need to have a body. Do you need you know, four limbs? Do you need a heart? Do you need two lungs? Do you need a brain? All these things are not issues that are answered with the bodily view of personal uh, identity. All the bodily view is stating that if we can all agree as to what it takes for something to be, have a body, for you to have a body, if we agree that we agree on that now, we come to some conditions that make something a body, okay, 
If they have a body, they're a person. That's what the bodily view is stating. Is there any reason to believe in the bodily view? Well, there's. It seems that you know. It seems quite intuitively, um, intuitively convincing. The philosopher Judith Jarvis Thompson is a supporter of the bodily view of personal identity. She says that it is the quote simplest view of what people are. So it's the simplest, the most intuitive way of understanding it. She doesn't say that she inhibits her body as in she is a thing that is inside her body. She says that she thinks that she is her body. Her body is the only thing that makes her her. There isn't just a there isn't just a you and your body. They're the same thing. They're numerically identical. And she also made clear that when it comes to questions about what makes a body a body, she thinks that the idea of a body is as a whole. So, for example, if she was to lose her hand, this wouldn't make any difference to the bodily view because it's not the specific, it's not the specific exact replica of the body that makes the bodily view, um, makes you a person according to the bodily view. What it is is all the the set collective things that we can consider as a body. That is what makes you a person according to the bodily view. Now the task for this lesson is just to write a short little thesis for why one might support the bodily view. We've talked about it here in this lesson here. And maybe can you think of any kind of issues with the bodily view of personal identity? We're going to have a look at some issues in the next lesson and at the start of the lesson afterwards. Uh, a few problems with the bodily view. Can you think of any of them before you even watch those lessons? And specifically we're going to have a look at the brain transplants argument against the bodily view in the next lesson.